What's up, everybody? It's Aaron and Nicole. This is Dude That's Fucked Up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a podcast. Okay, <laughs> this is the Spotify like end of year. We haven't even talked about this yet. Oh my god! But like the Spotify wrapped, year, wrapped like year, yeah. you know, year in review is out, and people have been tagging us in. Their, their stories stories yeah. about how much time they've spent with us this year it is overwhelming i'm i yes i like, can't believe it <laughs> i cannot believe that people have listened to us talk for multiple hours it is blowing my mind and making me feel very self-conscious me too oh my god that's <laughs> what, that was my thing because for, like my first thought was Oh my God, that's so, I feel so proud and so happy that like people enjoy it. And then my second thought was, my God, I've said some fucking weird shit. People have heard us talk about everything buttholes. from masturbating to bu- our oh buttholes God. to, I mean, our like real life relationships. It's so, I, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I know. I mean, I've talked about like childbirth multiple times. Yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. I don't care about that. I don't know. I just don't care. It's like, yeah, it's so weird doing a, a, a podcast where I'm just, you know, talking to my best friend is like, yeah, it's I'm talking to an audience of one. I know. In in real time. But then, you know, it's broadcast to I don't know how many people you know like yeah. fucking shit it's so weird to and then to like get feedback like that at the oh in in such a like like data driven way where yeah. I'm like oh, oh no <laughs> like you yeah. listen to that many hours of me and Nicole talking about shit and oh my Sasquatch's god. dick like oh my oh, god fuck oh <laughs> my god but then I'll, I like very quickly feel so close to those people because I'm like they I think know. what we think is funny is funny you know what I mean yes like, dude they want to talk about this stuff just as much as I want to talk about it like they want to hear about it and like and it, it's the same thing of like the podcast that I listen to I yeah. like have the you know, feeling of like, <laughs> I know the inside jokes. I know them. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're my buddies, you know, and like thinking that somebody thinks that way uh, about us is so cool. I don't I know. know. It's I know. trippy as fuck. It's, it's weird. It's cool. Uh, and we're I talking it. about it like it like people aren't listening. But if you are listening and this is you, thank you so much. It's so cool. We love you. It is so incredible and a, such a new weird feeling that I've never felt before and I can't really mm-hmm. like describe. even though we've been, we've been doing this podcast for you know nearly five years yeah. and Spotify wrapped has only been a thing for a couple years so yeah. it's like and I don't think anybody I don't know if anybody posted about it last year but I think people did but yeah it didn't like quantify it in the same way last year you know they always yes. find like, like new the amount ways of hours to make it interesting. Yeah. yeah or minutes mm-hmm. or whatever and yeah, so it's minutes, like yeah tens of thousands of minutes people have spent and it was like (gasps) and then I think oh my god that's we've spent that much time doing this which is Mm. wild you know like Mm -hmm. when we Mm -hmm. stop and think about it anyway it's been such a treat (sighs) I love it um I know it's very cool it's like one of the coolest things I've ever had happen to me I feel like I I know I feel man I don't know it's a feeling I've never felt before and man oh man it's weird, it's but also, also very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's very scary. It's very, very scary. Oof. Um, we're both wearing turtlenecks right now. Oh. Bitch, I was feeling festive. Bitch, me too. I was like about to make myself a tropical drink, and then I was like, no. I'm making myself something with apple cider in it. Ooh. So I made an apple cider Aperol spritz. Oh, my God. I'm Pete made me a gin gimlet, which I mm. think is very festive because it just feels... I love it. And it's in a cute glass and it's yeah, just a, a, it's a real cocktail. It is. Yeah. Cute. It's yeah. so delicious. And um, I did have a cider mocktail yesterday. So I have been drinking apple cider also. It's very good. delightful. Yeah. Mm. What a treat. Oh, oh, my God. Well. Well, that's... I mean, gosh. What a time. What a time. Um, the business is that it's... <sighs> Spotify wrapped has really put things in perspective. <laughs> Yeah. And it's terrifying and like very cool. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, 
follow us on all the platforms we always say that at the end but Mm -hmm. if you're uh, we're saying it up top too um Mm -hmm. go to our patreon for more content it's patreon.com slash dtfb podcast and um that's all the biz i have yeah that's good yeah i did you say follow us on all the platforms at dtfu podcast yeah, Just sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I already feeling this uh, Aperol spray. Oop, <laughs> yeah, you know it's going to be good. Also, mm-hmm. uh, I'll wait to comment on your beautiful makeup until we get into the topic because it's really Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you have anything <laughs> fucked up this week? Uh, oh, I wanted to. Oh, where are my notes? Why am I looking for them on my desk? They're in the computer, <laughs> your Nicole. Your paper notes. <laughs> I used to, and then I know, I know. We stopped doing it. I can't for I can't remember why, and now I might go back because you would print them before every episode, and you yeah. started getting really frustrated with your printer. I yeah, think. yeah, I yeah. Don't know. I don't know what happened, but I don't know. Um, okay, yeah. So okay, I'm in the notes now, and I'm good. <laughs> okay, I just want to give a shout out. Okay, I when we saw at the Rolling Stones, there was a band that opened for them mm-hmm. in Las Vegas, and they were the um, uh, Eurovision. They were like winners. I don't know if they were the winners, but they were like, that's how they like got on the map. They must have come in very close to the top, if not that that they won. Wow. And they're called Monaskin, which is it's spelled M-A with like the little circle over it. N-E-S-K-I-N. But it's Monaskin is how you like say it. It's like it's um I think Danish for midnight or Moonlight or something. Anyway, they're not Damish. Damish. <laughs> <laughs> this gimlet. This gimlet <laughs> is so strong. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah. So it's called. They're called Monaskin, and they're from Italy. Oh. And they are fucking. You will love them so much. They are classic rock vibes. They are gender bending fashion, like Bowie vibes and like early Alice Cooper. They are Italian fuoco, which is fire. They are hot, hot, hot. They're all like, I just watched a video of them earlier. A bunch of Harry Styles. (laughs) No, they're more androgynous and more glam rock. Harry Styles is Mm. like a little more like, 70s vibe like but yeah but like the mainstreamy more mainstream yeah. yeah these people are fucking hot and cool and so they rock very hard it's very fun like they they did it they they have released an iggy pop cover it's so good <gasps> yeah um love and i found a quote on one of their videos and this i think just like really encapsulates them for for me and i just was like yes this is perfection someone commented this entire group exudes chaotic by energy and I love it. And this is like <laughs> what I love about it. So anyway, check them out. It's Mona Skin, but it's M-A-N-E-S-K-I-N. And they're I think they were just on The Voice this week, which is why they came back into my peripheral. But amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I love I out. love a new music rec- recommendation. Me too. But a new but like old feeling like they they just rock really hard. And I feel like you don't get that anymore yeah so yeah yeah great. there's a few there's there's bands out there that do but you know it's probably you gotta yeah. you gotta like sift through all the the stuff oh yeah, man. i don't have time for that no i don't have time for that either what's um, your fucked up this week okay my, my by the way that wasn't fucked up but it was just like a fun a fun thing a yeah. fun shout out yeah it was just fun I, or fucked up a fun, fun or fucked, fucked up, up yeah i'm just yeah. using my time to promote this cool band okay i love it i love it um <laughs> that's great yeah. um well okay so we had it was Thanksgiving last week, or at, at the time of this release, it'll be a week and a half or two weeks from from now. From, this is from, the story with your grandpa. Yes. yes. Oh my okay. god. Okay. Erin told me something <laughs> fucked up happened, and it was so delightful. And she's like, "I'll tell it on the next episode." So I haven't even heard. Let okay. Me get this my cocktail. Is, okay. I'm. This settling. is going down in history <laughs> for me and dj and my brother is like one of the funniest things of all time um okay so (laughs) my grandpa is so we we first of all we had uh we had dj's family over for thanksgiving Mm -hmm. we hosted at our house and then we were gonna do thanksgiving part two leftover boogaloo with my family (laughs) at my aunt sandy's house Mm -hmm. and so that was on friday we did that um the day after thanksgiving so we went 
And it's just, you know, my mom and dad, my brother, my aunt Sandy and my uncle Howard and my grandpa and his partner Edie. Mm -hmm. And we just had a lovely time. It was delightful. We ate leftovers, had charcuterie, uh, drank, you know, beers in the backyard. And it was lovely. Um, My grandpa is one of the funniest people, like unintentionally. Mm -hmm. um, And intentionally. And intentionally. He he has a. He's a funny guy. He has a great sense of humor, a good storyteller. Um, he's he's Mexican, so he and he's like born and raised in Southern California. So he has like this, um, I don't give a fuck attitude all the time, uh-huh. where he just like will mispronounce words. I think on purpose. I don't know <laughs> what that's about, but he just does uh, on purpose, on accident. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's like he has this like. I don't know, like remnant accent, sort of. I don't know. It's really funny. So one of our family jokes is like he's he calls like fleece socks, fleet socks, (laughs) you know, stuff like that, where he just like doesn't pronounce the word the way it should be. He just the way he wants to. That's not even the same word. I mean, it's not. But, you know, it's (laughs) it's we we (laughs) We know what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, funny. It's like that's how he heard it initially, and then that's just what he stuck with, and no one bothers to correct it because it's like it's close enough, you know. Yeah, but yeah. we we've you know we like kind of poke fun at him, and oh, it's okay. just it's just cute, and yeah. he's just he's just really funny. Uh, there's a few other words he does that with that we always laugh at, and he he does it on purpose. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not yeah. like to make fun of him or anything like that. It's yeah. He's he's just funny, so. <laughs> And this is an example of how funny he is. Okay, so we're all standing around talking in the kitchen, me, me, DJ, and my brother and my grandpa. And we are, like, making little leftover sandwiches with the turkey. And my grandpa got really excited because we made a smoked turkey for, for Thanksgiving. Oh, right. And it's so fucking good. Like, DJ does it every, every year. Mm-hmm. And my grandpa had it last time we did Thanksgiving all together and he has never stopped talking about it. Like it's his favorite thing ever. Anyway, so we're all making little turkey sandwiches. My grandpa's like digging on the turkey and then DJ makes a little sandwich and he puts a, uh, (laughs) a potato chip on it. Like he's like invented some like new sandwich and we're all like laughing about it. And for some reason, my, it reminds my grandpa of something and he goes out of the blue. He just goes, you guys know RC Cola? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, me and my friend used to put penis in there. <laughs> and we're like, what? And he goes, penis. You put penis in the RC Cola and you drink it. And we're like, Lo- like he just keeps saying penis yeah, over and like over again. He, does, he <laughs> means peanuts, I'm assuming. Yes. 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 He but- means peanuts, but he keeps saying penis. Like, <gasps> And we're all like, what? And we're like starting to like lose it. And yeah. my brother turns and like is in the kitchen sink, just like leaning over it, <laughs> like with his back to everybody. And and then DJ's like shuffling around on the kitchen counter, like picking things up and like trying to like put it, like not like, make eye contact with yeah, anybody. Like, trying you know? not to actually lose it. And I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> like what is happening and then so then dj like says something like to try to di- but he says it with like tears in his eyes you know yeah like, the, so his like say- voices uh like the cry yeah. voice yeah 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 and so i turn around and i join my brother in the kitchen sink and we just like <laughs> lose our minds like we're laughing <laughs> tears i mean it's like one of those things where you had to be there but he's he and he starts my grandpa starts laughing too because he's like Okay, like I, I guess this is really funny, you know, <laughs> and and then we all like finally just burst out laughing like in his face, and he and I was like, Grandpa, you're saying penis, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Oh, peanuts, I I know peanuts, <laughs> and he's like, You do you want to hear about penis? I, one of my friends got his his dick stuck in a Coke bottle one time trying to pee in it. And when we got pulled over by the cops and his dick was stuck in the Coke bottle. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, yeah. And he like says the guy's name and stuff. And we're like, oh, my God. And so it was this whole thing. And then my aunt comes walking in and we're like crying, laughing. And and 
all she could hear is like dick in a coke bottle and she's like oh yeah tony blah 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 whatever his <laughs> name was and so that's that's all to say that my family talks about dicks a lot oh at Thanksgiving. oh my god unintentionally so we'll, we'll never stop talking about penis and rc cola so oh my god that's, that's so all. funny like also your grandpa should write in how that um the dick in the bottle got how that happened he should write in a listener story <laughs> I think it was like he just didn't want to like spray anywhere and his his little pee pee got yeah, yeah. stuck in there. I don't oh know. Oh my god. Oh yeah, my god. His friend his friend's pee pee. So. Oh my god. Uh, so it runs in the family, you guys. Yeah. Dick jokes. <laughs> my brother called me yesterday to make sure that I told the story on the podcast. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I love your brother so much. Uh, uh, also, when you were saying he like leaned into the sink, I just was like, you, I feel like I've had a lot of these with your brother specifically and like mm-hmm. you, obviously, but uh, like those moments where you might get in trouble for laughing yeah. like and so you're like really trying not to laugh like you're like oh just gotta like somehow crunch this down mm-hmm. and you can't make eye contact with anyone because that'll just put you over and those are like my favorite moments I've ever lived in you know what I mean I know I it was so oh my god it's just one of those times where you're collectively like like dying yeah and you want to like I don't know it was so fu- but it's like you you kind of have to know my grandpa and like know how he talks to like you did I a great know. job you did it know. you did exactly know. what you said it you know exa- I knew exactly <laughs> what you meant <laughs> penis we you know those penis, penis in there it's all it's like a country kind of accent where you drop yeah. some of the uh, you, but he's from fucking redondo beach i know, you know? but but you know it's oh, just bless. how he talks yeah oh so. my god so that was i just had to tell that story i had to get it out i had to let the world know that i love it it that's just my family is. i love it oh my god what a Always treasure about dicks. such oh a god. treat such a treasure um anyway yeah and then you know at thanksgiving we we uh, both sides of the family we had tons of conversations about like all the things happening in our country right now my Uh, god what a shit show what a dumpster fire what a what a rough time um what a yeah what a oh my god just like every morning i get the new york times like here's what you need to know for the day and i'm like i don't i don't need to know i don't don't, it's okay not interested yeah tell me when it's over yeah and just speaking of how terrible our country is Mm -hmm. uh (laughs) I don't know. No, we, you know what? It's crazy. It's like, it's simultaneously the best and the worst. Yeah. Oh, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, no, it's amazing to live here. I I don't think I'd want to live anywhere else. You know, there's a few places maybe I I would live, but not because they're better than here. Maybe climate wise or whatever. I don't know, you know, but it's like, we know. In terms of social, uh, social safety nets and, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Things, things like that especially being a lady are a bit better here than in some other countries believe it or not but also being a lady here is uh is uh not great either for it, it in a lot of trash. ways yeah uh and what better way to represent the american woman than pageants oh my god america's number one export pageant pageants <laughs> mm-hmm. and kardashians uh, same thing. And Kardashians. Yeah. And yeah, you know, um, great music. We have great music. That we do, we've yeah. Exported yeah, yeah. to the and world. films. And Entertainment. Films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're we're talking about pageants today, specifically mm. Miss America and Miss USA mm. and Miss Universe. Um, these are the main pageants here in the United States. They are iconic. Mm-hmm. They are amazing in so many ways. But they're also extremely trash. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just finding out they're all different. Yeah, I just I, I guess I didn't realize that Miss USA was not Miss America. Me either. Like you think it's the same? It's like USA America. They're interchangeable usually. Yes, um, they're different things, and we're going to talk about that uh, today and talk about some of the worst things ever associated with these pageants. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's tons and tons, but we're just going to roll through some of the all time hits. We should also so. point out Aaron's makeup looks flawless. And she like puffed her hair a little. 
and oh oh it's so fancy it's, it's in a bun it's, or something it, it's just it's just a messy bun that i made like look pretty amazing it's not, love it yeah love it i quaffed my hair today darling she quaffed it and but she also is very american and she did her uh, makeup like any i tease my hair sky high <laughs> to the to the lord higher to higher the hair higher to god closer that's to right. god <laughs> that's right oh my god you guys there's so much shit. Um, I just, I had to, I just felt so inspired to put mm-hmm. on my HD makeup mm-hmm. and go for it. Um, love it. It looks flawless. I, I love, I fucking love it. I love the, I love pageants. I think I love women so much. I just, I, in every form, even if it's like in this like trash way, like there's a lot of things to pull from pageants that we will love. We'll talk about all that. And stuff we can the, hate. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about the foundation of yeah. these competitions mm-hmm. and how toxic and yucky they are and in mm-hmm. all the ways. Um, okay. okay, so Miss USA, Miss Universe, and Miss America are all different competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, Miss America is an annual competition that is open to women from the United States between the ages of seventeen and twenty five. Oh, um, that seems yeah. young. Seventeen seems young. Yeah, yeah. very young. Uh, but it's like meant to be like a like gateway for opportunities for like scholarship and, mm. and you know, things like that. It didn't always yes. used to be, but yeah, nowadays it is true. Um, That's like re- they're defining there. We're like we're a scholarship competition. There's nothing else to see here, folks. Yeah. 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 We are serious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't always that way. Yeah. Um, it originated in 1921 as a, quote, bathing beauty review mm-hmm. in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So, like, ladies in their bathing suits, their bathing costumes, if you will. Right. Um, and the contest is now judged on competitors' talent performances and interviews. So, it's like they like people who are doing Miss America com- uh, pageants have a talent and they, like, uh, either sing or... You could say that. Or, yeah. You could say... Some of them are... <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> oh my God. There's there's so, so many, many embarrassing videos online, everyone. Please just It's Google. like, did you just learn how to do this you last did. week? Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure you did. Yeah. What is this instrument? Because no one's ever heard of it in the United States. So we don't know if you're playing it correctly, but it doesn't sound good. Doesn't sound like you do. Yeah. Uh a marimba, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, South Carolina? <laughs> really? Hmm. Mm. Mm. Did not realize. Uh yeah. So <laughs> So talent performances and interviews are what they judge the competition on now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of 2018, there is no longer a swimsuit portion to the contest or a cons- quote unquote consideration of political, p- political, physical appearance. I mean, um, really? Yeah, I know. No one's considering that. Especially since they say like in their rules, like they're they're like it's very their bylaws their yeah their bylaws yeah. like you have to be healthy right like what the fuck does that mean it's like very ableist very yeah. vague you yeah. know like i don't know like what uh, what that means so okay so um, but how was that different from like the miss usa okay so miss usa was an offshoot of miss america and okay. The winner of the Miss USA pageant goes on to compete in the Miss Universe pageant. So <gasps> Miss America's its like own oh. thing. It's like one one and done. But a lot of people compete in both Miss USA and Miss America. Uh, oh, but okay. Miss USA is has the potential for the winner to go to the international competition of Miss Universe. Um, and so, but Miss USA was an offshoot. It was conceived in in uh, 1951. Uh, it was offshoot of Miss America, conceived in 1951, when Yolanda Bet Bet I don't know how to say Bet-Bees? her last name. Yolanda Betbiz, uh, who was the winner of Miss America's pageant in that year, refused to pose for publicity pictures while wearing a swimsuit. Oh, um, like she had done all the things in the competition, and she's like, I don't want my image of me being me in a bathing suit to live in perpetuity I don't want to do that yeah so the pageant sponsor Catalina which was a uh, clothing oh (laughs) that's exactly what DJ said (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> We've seen uh, Step Brothers. We know. Yeah, we know. Uh, yeah, Catalina was a, a, a swimwear and clothing company uh, of the time, and they decided, uh, oh, you don't want to pose in our swimwear? You know what? We're just going to. We're going to make uh, we're going to pull our sponsorship of oh. Miss America and we're going to create our own competition. So basically they were like, oh, this, this bitch won't get half naked when we say so. We're just going to start a competitive comp- competition. Ooh. Rude as fuck. Rude. Um, so, yeah, it's it's like a full on whole other co- competing beauty pageant. Yeah. Next to Miss America. OK. So two separate things. Okay. Um, but it did come from Miss America. It's like the in spite of Miss America. Basically. And it is just a full on beauty pageant. Mm. Like they're like, we're not trying to hide it. We're not saying we're a scholarship program. No. They're like, we care about what you look like yeah. a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. And you have to wear a swimsuit. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. like, no, we don't give a fuck about your talents or how what <laughs> yeah. you have to say. Like <laughs> How do you walk in evening wear and bathing suits? Like, that is what it is. We're really worried about how you carry yourself as a woman in high heels. Yeah. And that's like what we care about 99%. We're just being honest here. Okay? Yeah, 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 we, yeah. You said you didn't want to pose in a bathing suit. We're just making our own competition so that people will just do that for yeah, us. Yes, it's all bathing okay. suits all the time. All bathing suits all the time, yeah. Uh, and the first Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants were held concurrently in Long Beach, California <gasps> in 1952. Ding, ding, ding. What's up, Long Beach? What a coincidence. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Miss, that's Miss USA. Miss Universe is an annual international beauty pageant that is run by the United States-based Miss Universe organization. Yes. Um, that's like um, Miss USA, Miss uh, Brazil, Miss... Jamaica, yeah, Miss like, Portugal, Miss, yeah, 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 okay. Miss Iceland, yeah, all the all the places, yeah. Okay. Um, it is one of the most watched pageants in the world, with an estimated audience of over 500 million viewers in over 190 territories. Hey. Dang. Um, along with Miss World, Miss International, and Miss Earth, Miss <laughs> Universe is one of the big four international beauty pageants. They used every single <laughs> fucking word for planet. I was what could- <laughs> Miss Planet. I was wondering yeah, oh. <laughs> where why they went from Miss USA and then the international one was Miss Universe. Like you don't know that you're Miss Universe. We the galaxy. Yeah, we haven't been all, to we yeah. haven't been to Planet Bleep Blorp yet. Like <laughs> yeah. calm down. What if they have the hottest lady? <laughs> you look like a pile of crap compared to the the bleep, hotties. The on, hotties on Bleep Blorp. <laughs> the hotties on Bleep Blorp. God damn. <laughs> um. <laughs> They're all butthole. Yeah. <laughs> buttholes and titties <laughs> they're just <laughs> swimsuit competition we don't even know where to put it we're just naked <laughs> buttholes and titties out here my mouth's a butthole and my eyeballs are nipples and <laughs> everything my armpits are buttholes my arms are titties my knees are nipples my legs titties. are titties <laughs> My toes are buttholes. Ass and titties. Ass and titties. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, God bless Bleep Blorp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? I love women. Like I said, I have nothing against any of the women who choose to compete in these pageants. That is my disclaimer at the top. If the if the pageant life is for you, then fuck yes. Like That's Aaron's disclaimer. I think it's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> But you, if you are into it, that's great. Yeah. But you should also know about the shenanigans that are related to these pa- these pageants. Shocking to almost no one, these pageants are built on a foundation of white supremacy, yeah. sexism, and misogyny that are just a mwah, perfect representation of the America of the past, the present, and probably the future, let's be yeah. honest. At um, least the near future. Yeah. I should also say, I don't really care if people do this. I do think it has been like a great stepping stone. You know, like this is Mm. a way for a long time. This was a way for women to like get out of their small towns or whatever. And like not just have to marry someone. And still is. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like, oh, yeah, you have to get married. And now you're you have to be a housewife and a mom. It's like, oh, you can go travel the world for a bit and like see what it's like to be independent and like have your own quote-unquote job and like you know it, w- it was a, um 
not it I mean it wasn't for a lot of people to have that path but it was for some women to you know make something out that they wanted to have of their own so yeah. I do think that's cool but in today's world it does seem unnecessary yeah I mean it's just it's an antiquated thing it's antiquated, I think yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there are efforts to modernize these pageants and make them, like, more inclusive, but... Mm. We'll talk at the end of what if we think that's possible. Yeah. So, but right now, let's talk about some of the truly insane things that have transpired within these contests. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, like, to begin with, the very first, like, original requirements of the Miss America pageant were predictably heinous um (laughs) dun dun obviously it only allowed white unmarried women who had never been pregnant slash had an abortion to compete (laughs) i mean like how uh, how do you how do you check somebody for an abortion listen this is that was the first thing i thought too i was like how do they know if women have had an abortion like obviously you know if they'd had children because I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe if, if true, fuck, dude, if you're there's some women out here in this world who have the, you know, insane good fortune of just looking like nothing ever happened to him. Fair. You know, especially my, if you're fucking 17. Yeah. If you're 17, your stomach doesn't look like Laffy Taffy after, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> pop out a child like yeah. you might not ever, uh, you know show any visible signs that you ever had a baby so I just don't know how that was a thing anyway um yeah but since 1950 the Miss America organization uh had required entrants to sign a contract stating they had never been married or pregnant like before it was just like on their honor basically (laughs) they were like okay (laughs) if we find out you have a family a whole ass family will you know take away your crown but In 1950, they, like, actually made women that competed start signing a contract saying that they'd never been married or pregnant. Um, And this was because this woman named – I think think it's pronounced Jackie. Yeah, I think so. Jackie? Jackie, yeah. Jackie Mercer, who was Miss America in 1949, uh, was married and divorced during her reign. So the year that she was Miss America, within that year, she – had started off she like got married and then she got divorced within that year Ugh. um <clears throat> and the pageant directors wanted all their miss americas to be wholesome but also eligible bachelorettes and firmly on the market aka fuckable and barely legal oh my god <laughs> ain't that the truth yeah i guess i was like why would they have a problem that she got married but i guess that's why it's because she's not they, as appealing anymore she's not like she's not on the market anymore yeah. like men can't look at her and be like not gross by wanting to fuck her i, I don't, don't know like, i oh i hate it I, it's so gross also the 1950s yeah i guess like oh uh, uh, you know like how uh uh, uh i don't even want to say this <laughs> you know how like in the 1950s when women got married the husbands would then refer to them as like mother Yes. It's like yes. that. It's like once a woman is married in that era, she's like all she's yeah, like suddenly you're no matronly. longer. Yeah. You're no longer the maiden. You are right. the mother. You're the, yeah. 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 You're the maid. This is the phase in your life like where it like suddenly the switch flips. Is yeah. Like the moment you get married. Yeah. It's gross. So weird. Um, And so so that in and of itself is like, whoa, OK, that's fucked up. Yeah. Uh, And only in 1999. um. <gasps> did it change the the organization's newly appointed CEO Robert Beck at the time sought to overturn the ban that disqualified contestants who'd been divorced or gotten an abortion again how the fuck do you know that Ugh. um instead requiring contestants to assure that they weren't currently married pregnant or quote the n- natural or adoptive parent of any child so ew he this new CEO was like yeah we we can't we can't ask people that. Uh, yeah. We can't have them sign a contract saying that. Um, it's, and it wasn't like out of the goodness of his heart. Um, <laughs> it was the change came because it was like at the recommendation of an, an attorney who advised 
the the CEO, uh, Robert Beck, that it could be a violation of New Jersey's anti-discrimination laws. And that's where the pageant has always been held in New Jersey, in, oh. in Atlantic City. So it's like, sir, so, it's 1999. Um, the only there are reason now, you should do yeah. this is because you might get sued. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like this whole law, though, this whole like thing of – having women sign this like declaration that they've never been divorced, married, were currently married, had an abortion, yeah, you know, or pregnant. Um, it, it just is such an example of how you hate, like this country hates women, like on a very fundamental level, yeah. like hates women and children. Yeah. 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 Truly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hate it here. Uh, <laughs> so despite this like logical, thing to change to like get into the the modern era uh the proposed changes were met with a lot of fucking backlash um from the miss america organization quote miss america has a long history of high moral standards and traditions (gasps) oh and, and i'm opposed to anything that changes that said libby taylor the president of the national association of miss america state pageants oh my god um, that libby was what taylor, she was quoted fuck off and yeah. die <laughs> i mean that um, moral bullshit is so disgusting i hate truly, it i truly hate it um yeah so and then uh, on top of that several current and former contestants publicly lamented that lifting the band would change the pageant for the worse for the worse and somehow deprive Americans of quote unquote good role models. Yeah, right. Oh, okay, yeah, cuz we all look to Miss America pageant contestants as role models. Said no one ever. It's so uh, it's so like it's so it's such a thinly veiled make America great again like fucking song and dance it's so gross truly weird a weird a weird fucking thing along with this just pure and unadulterated hatred of women there was also a lot of Mm anti-semitism obviously let's throw that in the mix Mm -hmm. um bess meyerson entered uh the miss america pageant in 1945 obviously very jewish meyerson um the pageant director reportedly suggested that she change her name because it sounded too Jewish. Um, she said, no, I will not do that. Uh, what a bad bitch. And she went on to fucking win that pageant. Oh, she won it. She's like, she said, no, I'm, I'm not changing my fucking name. Fuck you. And she won the pageant <laughs> and she went on to become the first and thus far only Jewish Miss America. Uh, mm where my Jewess is at like where what's going on let's get them in there I mean it's I wouldn't if (laughs) I was gonna say like they're off doing like bigger and better things it's fine I guess yeah um yeah so and this was like 1945 so this is right when World War II was ending Mm. and she like this was like she was like a symbol for yeah symbolic for Jewish women young women in the U.S. like this was like very cool like Holy like shit. we're different here. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, allegedly. Um, yeah. She became like a heroine for the Jews in the U.S. Um, according to the New York Times. But she was <laughs> like, you know, in that regard was held highly in esteem. But she was shunned by sponsors after her victory and banned from many hotels and country clubs during her reign. <sighs> I mean, I. <laughs> Again, it's not surprising. Mm-mm. Yeah, they had uh, obviously as a an institution that started in the 1920s. It had a uh, it has a huge history of racism, like throughout most Holy of shit. its existence. Like going back to the first pageant in 1921, <clears throat> you were talking about. So it took place in Atlantic City, and mm-hmm. back then they had a population of 20 percent of. Uh, black residents in Atlantic City but Mm -hmm. 95 percent of the workforce in the hotel industry was black so it's Mm -hmm. like you know the the tourism service industry service yeah is is Mm -hmm. uh, a majority black service members Mm -hmm. and they were able to participate the first year but it's not in the way you think because they were not 
contestants, they were part of this like parade when they brought the women in on a barge into Atlantic City, like into the pier. And they were dressed as enslaved people and they ferried the boat. It Fuck, dude. Like, they just started with like full racist behavior. Um and and while we're on They were like, Oh, you're you wanna be in the pageant? Yeah. You wanna participate? Here. Okay. Yeah, put put this on and then um row these women to the Yeah, it's so disgusting. It's so disgusting. Jesus Christ. Um and while we're just like side note while we're on the topic, the pa- the pageant the first year uh had like a mascot and it was King Neptune. It was like this King Neptune cosplayer and he was like the lord of this barge that like brought these women in for the event and his name was Hudson Maxim. He was also coincidentally the inventor of smokeless gunpowder and he only had one arm because he lost his other arm in a lab accident when he was inventing smokeless gunpowder. Oh, no. And the this is like where we're at when we start this whole franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the foundation. <laughs> this is the foundation it, of it. That it's built on. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's already starting in a not great place. It feels very, I, I got to be honest, Atlantic City. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like envisioning Boardwalk Empire, like, oh, you know, like yeah. that's like the vibe I'm getting. And they just absolutely do not allow Jews or black people to yeah. participate. Anyone's like, not white. You're not involved. Yeah. And it like also they they were like, you know what? We need to keep this as white as possible for as long as possible. So they never they weren't letting people participate uh black people people of color um and in the 40s they made it official by enacting what they called rule seven like in their bylines or whatever which stated that contestants had to be in good health and of the white race that was in the bylines they just said it they just just were like yeah like this is for white women yeah um and the so that was instituted in the 40s and the pageant took so long to integrate it it didn't integrate until 1970 Um, jesus christ yeah that was only 13 years before we were born yeah and like i think 13 or 14 years before the first black contestant would be crowned too like Mm -hmm. it was like it uh, everything was so behind as it would be with this like it it feels like Phyllis Schlafly or whatever her name is literally yeah. like created all of this as a way to like attract women into being kind of like subservient and ladylike and traditional using air quotes and quote traditional. traditional yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and so, yeah. So in uh, 1968, there was a huge movement. They were like black people were like protesting. They're like, no, we want to be a part of this. They were trying to like, be, be able to participate in this and mm-hmm. the Miss America pageant was like nope sorry and so um along with the NAACP they uh the black community founded Miss Black America which still exists and they founded it in 1968 and it was a way to protest the Miss America pa- pageant the entire institution the entire of institution the Miss America. Yeah, yeah and to celebrate black women they had Curtis Mayfield Oh. write and sing the like song of their pageant like the mm-hmm. miss black america pageant and he sang to directly to women to like to black women to uplift them and said this is like um lyrics from the song quote you're such wonderful people and so beautifully equal that's like part yeah. of the lyrics and it was just like the celebration that uh would basically become like a beloved pageant and like yeah was something that really uplifted the community and so like i said the uh, miss america pageant wouldn't officially integrate until 1970 and it would take over a decade for the first black contestant to be crowned and we'll talk a little more on that later because she was famous but um Mm -hmm. is famous a famous one is famous yeah. yeah this institution of of miss america miss usa really also hates women's naked bodies almost <laughs> naked no those are celebrated 
fully totally naked, fine. get the fuck out of here. What are you doing? We see a nipple, get the fuck yeah. out. We're snatching that crown off your fucking head. The, we have morals here. <laughs> no nips. Not a nip. Not a single nip. Um, oh, you have a third nipple and you can't help but show it? Put a tassel on it. And get <laughs> out there on the runway. Um. Now, Vanessa Williams. Ah. Uh. Blessed, beautiful Vanessa Williams. She was crowned Miss America in 1984. Oh, my God. She became the very first black woman ever to win the title. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Like... This woman is still so insanely beautiful, too. Like, I was just, like, looking at pictures of her. My God. And what a talent. A stunning woman. I love, oh, my God. I will watch every, like, made-for-TV movie she's in. I love her version, her ver version of the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I love her version of the holiday film. Like, it's, like, the Scrooged mm, holiday, mm -hmm. but she's, like, the, like, washed-up singer or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. the diva. I think it's like a diva Christmas or something. A diva Christmas girl. Yeah, that's what it is. Mm. And I fucking, she's the only reason I watched Ugly Betty. I love her so oh, okay. much. Yeah. Yeah. Vanessa Williams. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, but she, so after she's crowned, she's nearly a year, like she's almost uh, through her year reign. Mm -hmm. um, when Penthouse published unauthorized nude photos of her. And she was pressured by the Miss America agency to resign her title because of it. Like, fuck that. Fuck everything about this shit. What a fucking insane thing to tell a person to do. Like, yeah, like this would be illegal nowadays, basically. Like she she well, would, but I think it still happens. Like, like, I'm sure if it well, it's like Channel it's like stars, it's like revenge porn. There's yeah. like revenge porn. Oh, oh, laws penthouses. Um, mm -hmm. oh, penthouse would be illegal. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, at the time they were probably like, uh, this is just what I was gonna say too. Like that must have been a very weird meeting where it's like, hey, we got these pictures, they're unauthorized. Should we publish them? And it's like someone has to like weigh the cost analysis of like, do we publish them and potentially get sued, or do we not? And like, but still make yeah. a lot of money. Or just, yeah. do we just, like, call it a wash and not publish him? But it's like, well, no, they made enough money that it made it worth it, which is so disgusting. So disgusting. And I think she was a teenager when the photos were taken. So also, this was, like, a fucking crime because she was probably a victim. Like, she was a yeah. photographer's assistant when these were taken, and I think she oh. was a teenager. Like, 17 or something? I don't like know. Younger, yeah, 17? I don't know. Oh yeah, God. but it sounds a little... <sighs> I mean, obviously, she was taken advantage of in some way. I mean. And obviously, she was like, had her nude photos that she didn't think would ever see the light of day published to a major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that. Like, publication. Like, that's fucked up without mm -hmm. her consent. Oh, my God. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, So, she went through this horrible, like, victimized on multiple fronts, yes, basically. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and. It's just so heinous. But fucking um, but is a strong ass bitch and fucking was like, you know what? I'm still going to have a career. I'm going to have Grammys. Oh. I'm going to have uh, hit singles. I'm going to have famous TV shows, movies. I'm going to be a model. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be a, the voice of a Disney princess. Uh, a singing voice. I don't oh, know. yeah. Oh, she did the Pocahontas. song. Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, she did the song. She did the like Colors radio of the wind. version, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a huge bop. She, That's she, a Also... She had a hit before that. It's it was on like fucking all the soft rock stations. It still is sometimes. I hear it on ninety four seven the wave. <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes the snow. <laughs> oh my god! Do you know that song? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know it. Everyone knows it. I know it. We know her. Uh, I know her. <laughs> The opposite of Mariah Carey's. Oh, I don't yeah, know her. I don't know yeah. Her. <laughs> um, but in 2016, she like totally like got, her, I guess, re revenge. Maybe. Mm. Uh, eh, I don't know. In 2016, she became the head judge for the pageant. And vindication. The, vindication. There yeah. we go. Uh, the Miss America CEO at the time, Sam Haskell, publicly apologized for the agent's treatment of her. And the whole shenanigans of forcing her to resign. He apologized oh. publicly, which is, I guess, 
cool. Like, I don't know. Fucking as JoJo would say, too little, too late, bitch. That's right. Uh, but speaking of Sam Haskell, Haskell, this motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> this is how I know that shit was not fucking uh, uh, anything. Wasn't shit yeah. because <laughs> it wasn't his and, idea either. It, I mean, he claims he's like a friend of Vanessa Williams now, but like, fuck. In December of 2017, Huffington Post published emails written by Miss America CEO Sam Haskell to others employed by the organization using misogynistic language, of course, to describe women who compete in the pageant. Many of these emails, like, name specific contestants by name and refer to them as, quote, snakes and cunts. <gasps> Fuck this shit but of course fucking of course of course like, like nobody's nobody's surprised nobody's shocked by this fucking shit um, there's no i just feel like there's no pageant like there's no institution that has started as a pageant that will ever be beyond that like you're still mm. always gonna look through the lens of that i mean yes of course yeah um so this fucking guy resigned two days after the emails became public oh, and good. the a board chair, Lynn Widener, and the president, Josh Rand, also resigned. So bye. Bye. Fuck off. <laughs> um, so much for an organization who values wholesomeness. Like, yeah, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Fucking look at my nipples. Suck my left titty. Yeah. Um, speaking of loser asshole men who treat women like shit, um, Donald <laughs> Trump, this motherfucker piece of shit, oh my used God. to share control of the Miss Universe organization. Big surprise. Yeah. With the and with NBC Universal, uh, he sold the organization to W WME. Uh, IMG in 2015. Mm. Uh, he was forced to sell the Miss Universe organization, uh, which also includes sister scholarship programs, Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. Mm. In 2015, after his uh, horrible and shitty comments about Mexicans driving w about Mexicans, <gasps> yeah, like, you know, like the wall and all that, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that drove away a broadcaster, NBC, and Univision. Um, and but this was after he'd already owned the pageant for nearly two decades. Yeah. And um, had said other shit, I'm sure that no one like, you know, it's it's like. Yeah, <laughs> he he's so fucking gross. Um, yeah. So he he owned it for nearly two decades, during which time he would have had the opportunity to come in contact with nearly four thousand beauty queens. Um, in fact, back in 2016, before he came president, Right after that Billy Bush bullshit mm. um, where grab he's on the, the bus, grab him by the pussy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that shit. And everybody started coming out of the woodwork to warn the population uh, about what an absolute garbage person he was. Yeah. Uh, allegations came out that he he ent Trump entered the Miss Teen USA changing room where girls as young as 15 years old were in various states of undress. Oh, my um, God. Miss Teen Vermont from 1997, Mariah Bellotto, told BuzzFeed, uh, quote, I remember putting on my dress really quick because I was like, oh, my God, there's a man in here. Oh, my God. Um, three other teenage contestants from the same year confirmed the story um, and the former pageant contestants discussed their memories of the incident after former Miss Arizona Tasha Dixon told the Los Angeles' uh, CBS affiliate that Trump entered the Miss USA dressing room in 2001 when she was a contestant. So Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, doesn't matter to him as long Gross. as he can catch a, a woman or a girl, little girl in the fucking almost nude. Um, oh, my God. And he, he very much verified that he did all these things. Yeah. When he was on Howard Stern in 2005 – bragging about how he did exactly what the women describe he said quote i'll go backstage before a show and everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else he said that makes me so mad not at him although i don't i dislike him and i think he's a gross i, I mean i'm so mad at him but like where are all the other people that are like working this event like where are the women who are helping these girls get dressed and like 
the st- the stage hands and the producers like where are they that was part of it that was part of it they were these like every every level yeah. of this organization basically told these girls and these women to like fawn over Donald Trump like it's because so he gross. owned the he owned the pageant um, this is everything that's wrong with like the entertainment industry in general. It's like mm-hmm. everyone is always trying to get up the next rung that they're like kissing someone's ass and it's grotesque and it's creating shit for a ton of people. Like it's putting oh, it's disgusting. specifically women in harm's way and it's so gross. Well, Trump also not only was he like popping in and being a fucking gross creep. Yeah, on- gawking. On yeah, on on these women and girls, he also bullied former contestants. Yeah, of course, of course. he did. Yeah, um, specifically Alicia Machado. Um, after she became mm-hmm. Miss Universe in 1996 at the age of 19, um, she said that Trump called her disparaging remarks all the time, like quote Miss Piggy, because she gained weight after the after the pageant, and quote Miss Housekeeping oh my because God. of her Venezuelan accent. Fuck that, oh, Jesus my Christ. God. Um, for his part, Trump openly admits that he pressured Machado to lose weight after she won. Ugh. What fucking like he's not even like clever. It's all such just like grasping School, at school schoolyard fucking six year old like Yeah, bullshit. like fucking like, nineteen ninety uh, you know, stand up jokes that were not appropriate then and certainly aren't appropriate now. It's just so gross. Yeah, it's so gross. I truly cannot wait for time to do its thing and this man to not exist on Earth anymore. <laughs> time to do its thing. Yeah, you know. I know. Yeah, also the, this organization, the the Miss USA or, yeah, Miss USA, Miss America, they don't mind racists very much either. Um, I no. mean, obviously, their whole shit is founded on They loved them, I would imagine, in the, especially yeah. in the beginning. And they, they, didn't, they didn't even let black people participate until 1970s so yeah of course they don't mind races very much yeah uh after a perfect example is after being crowned miss texas teen usa in 2016 carly hay got in big trouble for using the n-word multiple times um she 2016 uh, yeah she a deep dive into her twitter from earlier years revealed she'd used the n-word and racial <gasps> slurs multiple times oh. and if she's saying that shit on twitter she's saying it in real life i guarantee it oh my um, duh but guess what unlike vanessa williams whose only scandal was like not her fault at all f- having an unauthorized nude photos published of her uh hey kept her crown they were like, oh, you said the N-word? That's okay. Oh. No problem. My God. You're racist? Mm. Says who? Oh, my God. Says Twitter. Says your Twitter yeah. bio. <laughs> Jesus it's Christ. It's probably in her, like, oh, God. In yeah, her, like, so, away message on Twitter or whatever. I don't know. So that's just, like, the fundamental trash aspect. But, like, there's some actual, like really crazy things that have happened um and we'll just breeze through those real quick um oh my god just all you have to do is like youtube um fucked up pageant uh, moments (laughs) or like funny pageant moments there's so much content like i didn't even skim the surface it is i mean from ants you know like the answers that the contestants give to their talents to think just things going wrong people tripping um, oh. it's all it's all <laughs> a fun time it's ridiculous yeah uh. but probably one of the biggest fuck-ups in the history of any pageant yeah. I think yeah probably maybe I think was yeah yeah it was 2015 in the Miss Universe pageant like mm-hmm. the one big of the stakes. big ones high stakes big stakes high stakes Steve Harvey was the the host and he announced the wrong winner. <laughs> Do you guys remember this shit? Oh, my God. It was so embarrassing. I don't remember that. I feel like I remember the story about it, and I, like, didn't care. But it... it oh, my God. N- now, like, knowing that, like, especially the Oscars have done it and stuff, it's like, what's yeah. going on? Why aren't they printing the right name on the card? Why isn't it very clear? Like, is it scribbled? Did someone handwrite it in, like, doctor script? Did somebody, like, whisper it in his <laughs> ear and he just was like, I think it was this? Yeah, did you Ooh. say Miss Columbia or Miss Philippines? Like, they don't even yeah. sound the same, Steve. 
Yeah, he fucked up and he said Miss Columbia won when it was actually Miss the it was actually Miss Philippines. Yeah. Um, and then when he like apologized the next day on Twitter, he fucking spelled Columbia wrong. Oh no! <laughs> he spelled it with a U instead of an O. I mean, oh man, my god! Come on. Well, come on, man. You know, I mean, that, honest mistake, but yeah. still. Also, uh, was, he, I bet he felt really bad. I'm sure he did. I'm I. I'm not hating on yeah, Mr. Steve Harvey. But. They also the women allegedly like handled it very well. Like they were like, oh, that's OK. Like, oh, you know, because he corrected it pretty quickly. Um, I just remember his face and like all of the, the Internet. Oh, my like, God. Using their fucking mind. I over can't the look shit. at it. It's so that makes it's me cringe. So cringe. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. No. Um. Oh, my God. And then another epic fucking mm-hmm. fuck up this do you guys one. okay this one i remember this one i remember because howard vividly. stern played it all the time like there, this was like in clips of clips like <laughs> it was just so like ridiculous. repeated all the time on like talk soup or whatever and like all these places okay and it's i mean it's a little mean that we really went so hard on her but in 2007 <laughs> Miss Teen South Carolina, Caitlin Upton's word salad (laughs) response to a question about why she thought one fifth of Americans couldn't find the U.S. on the map. Um, This is her. Wait, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to. Do you want a dramatic read? No, I was going to say I'll be the interviewer and you dramatic read it. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Miss Teen South Carolina, your question is, why do you think. Only one fifth of Americans cannot find the U.S. on a map of the world. I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some uh, people out there in our nation don't ha- have maps. And uh, I believe that our education, like such as in South America and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and i believe that they should our education over here in the u.s should uh, help the u.s or uh or should uh help the south africa and should help the iraq and the asian countries so we will be able to build up our future for the for our children (laughs) she had a full-on seizure or like a stroke or something that isn't even it's just I mean, take a breath, honey. It's okay. Yeah, if it's you just the nerves. I think it is. It does not. She blacked out. She, she blacked like, out did the full thing. She <laughs> oh, did the God. thing Will Ferrell does in old school, except it's not in a good way. Like he... it's like a nonsensical. Yeah. 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 Oh my God, that's upsetting. Poor, poor thing. Oh man. Great dramatic. Yeah. Reading, though. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh. Honey, um. Honey, honey. Okay. Well, this is short and sweet, but a similar like. In terms of the Q&A portion of the evening, in 2009, Miss California, her name was Carrie Prejean, which I remember this Mm -hmm. name, and it's because of this. Um, So Perez Hilton was a judge that year on the panel, and he asked the question, like, what do you think? This was, like, right after, like, um, uh, what was it? What was it called here? Like, whatever, eight? Like, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The prop, prop eight. Prop eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So prop eight, like, can we can we make marriage legal for same sex couples? Like all that stuff. And um, she he asked, like, do you what do you think about gay marriage? And she said that, quote, marriage should be between a man and a woman to Perez Hilton's face. She got Bitch. so much shit for it. Rightly so. And. I don't I think they tried to strip her of her title and they didn't end up doing it because it was like her opinion. Um, But they tried. (laughs) California was Mm. like, no, ma'am, you will not be representing us in the future. You cannot Mm -mm. and will not. And then she's like, I can and I will. And they're like, "Okay." (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. She just really took a fat dump on stage (laughs) right to Perez Hilton's face. Oh, my God. So rude. Um, and then in 2016, so Mark Cuban of a shark tank, <laughs> billionaire and other and things. owns the Spurs. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, San Antonio Spurs. 
Mm-hmm. He was a judge in 2016 for the Miss America pageant, and he was caught on camera. This is like an editing thing, but also it happened, so it's like you can't blame editing. But it was during the swimsuit mm. competition, and he was caught licking his lips like in a very horny way. <laughs> It was so gross. It's like it he the man looked like one of those cartoon dogs where like the eyes come out and it's like they're panting and it and then the they cut to like a girl in a bikini, a very beautiful young girl in a bikini walking and like cut back to him and he's like like just so into it. It's so gross. But I'm not going to judge because, again, if that was Oscar Isaac walking that stage, a wooga. You know what I mean? <laughs> a wooga, wooga. A wooga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my I God. Haba, haba. Um, can, oh we, can we talk about some of the talents? Because. Talents. Yeah, yeah, quote unquote talents. I sent Aaron a video earlier of someone playing a marimba. That was <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I just want to talk about some of the dumbest talents to be showcased in the pageant. OK, so okay. some of the dumbest ones include rifle twirling. Who's you don't need to dance with a gun, ma'am. It's like drill team or some shit. Oh, yeah, that's true. I hope it's not loaded. It probably is at this pageant because everyone's <laughs> dumb as fuck. OK. <laughs> Um, puppetry slash ventriloquism. So, Love that. <laughs> yeah. Social commentary, <laughs> which was a talent, but I think it's just like spoken word. But I don't like think giving it was, like, a speech. I guess it wasn't like poetry. It was just like someone's thoughts and feelings on advertising. Um, I mean, so a podcast. A po- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So this podcast. Um, yeah. Someone jump roped to Elvis. <laughs> bitch you fuck you she's like oh, fuck i don't oh, i forgot to, i forgot the talent portion oh no does anyone have a jump rope yeah but we only have an elvis song it's okay i got it <laughs> um someone learned how to yodel while doing ventriloquism with two puppets they were like yodeling okay, bitch, that is that is a talent okay that's a talent mm, that is a talent it's a skill i don't know if it's a talent <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> and then, okay, I watched a whole video about how dumb this was, but it was like this atrocity in 2015, and I can only describe it as pentatonics meets pitch perfect. Oh, no. God, Which my worst both nightmare. Of those, <laughs> both of those Ugh. things just horrify me. And this woman won. Okay, I forget. Wait, she was like a one one woman pentatonics or however the fuck you say that dumb fucking name of that fucking dumb acapella group <laughs> so, oh God. she did okay you know that cup song oh god are you fucking kidding me but oh god. she didn't do that song and it was not as endearing as the anna kendrick one which i don't even like i hate that song i mm-hmm. hate the performance of it everything about it i hate she did the like cup beat and she sang because i'm happy <laughs> Uh, clap oh, along Jesus. if you feel and she was like getting people to clap and then she was doing the cup thing while she sang it was so bad and she oh. won she oh, won in no. 2015 it's so upsetting this is the thing these fucking judges have a zero class taste they it's don't all... know what's going on no come on man oh my god uh, final thing, just this was like a fun hero moment that I wanted to shout out. Uh, mm. This is from the New Yorker article. I'm just going to read it because it's I'm just going to read it. OK. Mm. In 1988, a college student named Michelle Anderson infiltrated the Miss California pageant as a contestant, undergoing months of bleaching, dieting, training, tanning and feigning fundamentalist beliefs to get into the running. Seconds before the winner was to be announced, she reached into her cleavage and unfurled a silk banner that read, Pageants Hurt All Women. Anderson went on to become a lawyer and is now the president of Brooklyn College. Amazing. Wow. Uh, wow, wow, we wow. I know. That was just so, that was embar- an embarrassing moment for the pageant, I would say. Um, ah. But definitely very cool and very metal. 
Dude, that is fucking so punk rock. I love it. I know. Wow. I know. That's pretty sick. I love it. Oh, my God. Well, what do you think? Uh, oh. Final thoughts, feelings here? Yeah. Um, I, I, you yeah. know, yeah. I, it's a lot. I'm of, I'm of two minds about okay. pageants. Okay. Like, I, like I, I kind of alluded to at the beginning. Like, well, obviously, on one hand, this whole institution is very much built on a rotten foundation. Yeah. And it's therefore very ick, very gross, very disgusting to me. Yeah. Um, but I also like really love the campiness of pageants. I know. I love the hyper feminism of it all. Me too. I love how gorgeous these women are. Um, and I want them, I don't think they can be, but I want them to be reformed to be, they're trying, they're trying to be more inclusive and not cater the- to the male gaze, but that's never going to not be, it's, it's never not going to be catering to the male gaze. It's impossible. Cause that's how it was built. Like yeah. also the fact that the fact that what's required of you to participate, like it's just so it, it, Requires a lot of like privilege to require on so many levels and to Mm -hmm. win it. But, you know, like it's very expensive to enter and stuff. And then I think if they were able to change the rules to be like you could stay in college if you win and we'll work around your schedule and that type of stuff, then it would be so different. But like that's not what it is. It's like Mm -hmm. you're basically vying for like an influencer type position. Most of the women that compete drop out of school once they get a ranking you know they become miss fill in the state or town or whatever you know yeah miss whatever yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah i just feel like it's ultimately hashtag hurts all women Mm -hmm. um but it doesn't mean i don't think it should exist on some level like i think it's a burn it down and start over situation Mm. and it you know it'll it'll never not be tarnished by gawking men Unless it's built from scratch by drag queens and I nominate not RuPaul. That's too basic. And also he has some problematic stuff that he's older and should retire soon. Mm -hmm. I nominate the Boulay brothers because their show Dragula is very inclusive and it's also fucking hella metal. And let's get some of those vibes in there. Let's like I want that too. I want that. I want the glamour filth. I want like I just want like the rock and roll of it. Some like John Waters shit. I want some. I like you know I want some like like unconventional subversive shit like yeah. in the mix like and I want some real goddamn talent or you better be fucking weird dude yeah there's no in between you can't hit a cup on the ground and sing fucking Pharrell <laughs> you can't jump rope to fucking Elvis okay <laughs> oh my Rachel, god oh my god you bet you you better uh. at least mud wrestle to Cindy Lauper. You know what I mean? Like, you better at least, like, make it art. Queef a fucking <laughs> ping pong ball out of your coochie. I don't care. You better you know, queef a sonata. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. This is what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm talking about. Like, if you can sing out of your asshole, if you can figure out how to do that, yeah, let's have a pageant of that. I'm I'm in. I'll buy tickets. Great. Yeah. I'll fucking enter myself. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I got to figure out my talent first, but. Well, also, like, I mean, these, like, strict requirements of, like, you can't be married. You can't have kids. You can't, yeah, like, those have ever been. De- like, that's ridiculous. Like That should go also, away and, and, and the, like, the, like, very vague, like, you must be in good health. Mm-hmm. Like, that is a very broad way of saying, like don't enter if you are disabled in any way yeah you know yeah. like it's yeah it's, you're right you know yeah so I also think like anything you know we talked a bit about some of the people who have been in charge over the years including the former president and it's like yeah PU you know that stench is still on it and I mean that mm-hmm. in a very literal way where there's like people that are still working for those institutions that once supported these trash humans like mm-hmm. and that's not gonna change like you yeah know, you gotta it's just it's it's just a breeding ground yeah. for for once it's built on this foundation of, of yeah. grossness it's like it's always going to be a breeding ground for the type of people who support white supremacy, misogyny, yeah. 
anti-Semitism. You know, anti-Semitism. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. So burn it all down. Yeah. All right. All well, right. Follow us on social media, DTFU Podcast everywhere. Go to our website, DTFUPodcast.com. Oh. Um, thank you for listening, you guys. I hope you liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't judge us. I don't know. <laughs> I want tens, no. tens, tens across the board. No notes. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, listen here. Be excellent to yourselves. And each other. Okay, bye. Bye.